Okay, my friends, Roger once again. I'm going to make this extremely simple. CERN is completely wrong. They did not create matter from light. Light is matter. Einstein was totally wrong. Light can accelerate, light can slow down. Light is matter. Light is a particle. Light, as I will show you, can actually divide from the weak and the strong force. The actual problem that CERN is having is they are breaking these big huge chunks which are called nucleuses and smashing them into chunks of nucleus and every now and then they will find one little bitty particle that they say ooh, ooh, ooh look at this is a boson well let me tell you something if they think that that's the only one there is and every now and then there's just one here and there. No, 100% of matter is made from these light particles. And I will demonstrate that in a little bit of detail right now. But the nucleus of every atom is composed of electrons. And an electron is not just a negative. An electron is like this. It has a, a strong and a weak force. All right, can you see that? All right, it has an explosive force and a carrier force. That's what makes up an electron. A photon is two of these back to back. These bounce off things and create light. These fuse into things and create heat and electricity and combustion. Now, Helium, its nucleus is not one, one proton, absolutely not. Helium has 1,837 electrons in its core. Now, let's look a little deeper. Uh, just a second ago, I was pointing to this and saying helium. I meant hydrogen. Look, look at all the different isotopes for hydrogen, all the different weights. They, they, they have no clue about what is because you can't have all these different variations and just have one big proton it's just impossible and and the other things have so many isotopes it's just insane and some of them are stable some of them aren't stable see this is stable and not stay or both are stable and this one's stable for 12 years and then some of them are stable for such and such a period of time some of them are bigger some of them are smaller it, it, nothing worked Nothing worked in the Bohr theory whatsoever, and they admit it now, but they just can't come around to electron flood theory, which is the only thing that does work, and 100% of everything is made of electrons. CERN created nothing. They created no matter, because the matter is the electrons. That's all. Simple as that. All right, here are my statements, and here are my claims, and here is the proof of my statements and my claims. I claim that this is what looks like a wave of light, which is a pulsed laser. It is literally actually this. We are seeing just the leading edge, pulse, 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 one right after the other. The particle looks like this, and the particle is deep inside the wave. Now, it would never come out of the wave except over here we put it through a venturi. Rod Warren discovered this a few years ago and graciously worked with me to do a bunch of experiments and showed exactly what I have always said for 50 years. There is, it's, this has to be a dipole. The all particles are dipoles, which means they have a positive and negative. But let's get back to this. That is the particle that was inside this wave inside this what we looked at and saw as a wave and because we are forcing it to accelerate through that venture forcing it, it and there's no other option it must accelerate and it does and then it displays itself as its particle nature and then at the venture it explodes and literally divides it comes in as this as you will see right here, this is just prior to concussing at the venturi. Then at the venturi, the black part actually divides from the white part. And this is what we would see as the white part coming out at us. 
which is called electron showers. I'll explain that in a second. Now, there is a problem with when these recombine with the black balls. And again, I will show you that in a second. Now, we found one of these. Whatever that is, that could be the thing that is not coming back together the right way. So you have not... All I'm doing is showing you what we see. I can't explain what this is. All I can tell you is that these particles are from light. That's a red laser. That's a red laser accelerating. That is the particle that is just right before here. And this is when it concusses. And here's what happens after it concusses. All right, and here it is right here. Before, remember, it was black and white together, and now all of a sudden the black ones roll away, and they come back way down here. Here is 100%, 100% solid, concussive, explosive white. This is what they would call the fermion. This is what they call the boson. They would call this the muon. They would call this electron neutrino showers. Whatever name you want to call it, this is the explosive strong force. This is the non-explosive, non-concussive gathering force. It wants to be with the white, and it doesn't mind being with its own kind either. The black will go right up against the blacks. The black will go right up against the whites. The whites will go right up against the blacks when the blacks are against the whites. The, it's, the black is the gatherer, but it's not the exploder. The white is the carrier. It goes along with the the black one, and then when it reacts, it explodes. That's the powerhouse. All right? They created nothing. Light is a hundred percent of matter, and matter consists of light, and light is this particle here, and that particle, when you put enough of them together, they form molecules and atoms, and the atoms are always encrusted with negativeness on the outside because they're the ones that want to get away from each other. The black ones will go right in and form solid masses in the center. And I have shown this with magnetic tape here. Watch. This will show, as I come close to this, we'll start to see a white field show up. You see the white field outside the black center? The black center is the negative, is the positiveness. The white is the negativeness. When we get up right tight on it, it is so attractive to the blackness. All the black is pulled in, all the white is put to the outside. And that's what's happening here. All the, what we would call positive particles are in the center, the non-reactive, carrier particles, the, what I would call the gravity particles, the gathering particles. And they're in the center, and the white ones are on the outside. They want to be together. I think it, it, one wants to be with one or the other. I think there's an equal relationship, one to one. That's how I see it. However, we can see there's no question whatsoever, 100% certainty that they can leave each other and go on their own ways and then recombine back to here. I believe, as we saw before, that one ball, hold on, all right, once again, this is not hard. That is the black ball. It has no explosive value. That is the white ball. It creates those electron showers. Electron neutrino create electron showers. Muon neutrinos just creates this muon black ball. The two of them together, before they concuss, are literally an electron. And if you have two them this way and another one next to it, as I showed you, then you have a photon. Now, Cheryankov radiation is just high speed, high voltage. High voltage. When this concusses, it, it explodes as it hits all the other electrons in front of it. Boom! Get out of my way. This one says, I don't care. You guys can just be with me. I'll be, I'll, I can get along with anybody. So these will, this is the gatherer. All right? He wants to be with this guy. But it doesn't want to be with that guy when this guy wants to explode. It will move away, and then it will come back. Now, there is 
in the Royal Institute, they are talking about, they, they agree the Bohr model does not work because when they come back together, they don't always come back together in the right proportions. Now, I have shown that we see a particle that, I don't know what the hell the damn thing's doing. Um, so if, if you could detect extremely sophisticated number of particles, that is not the same as the other particles. And um, and I have seen a few things that were sort of strange, but I just, you know, I had plenty on my plate to deal with. So, but that one there intrigued me. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, I showed you that's the light, non-accelerated. Nothing would be different than that except nothing. <laughs> when you put it through the Venturi, it accelerates and creates these electron showers coming out of the Venturi, the electron showers, and it creates the black balls which we saw roll away all the way around and then regather back here. But it also created this. Now that is not either one of these particles as far as I'm concerned. So I don't know, it's, it's going to do something to the value of one or the other or both of them. I have no idea. But we're finding things here that they should be looking at. There's the positive and negative parts of electrons. One of them explodes, the white one, the black one doesn't do anything. The white black one, I showed you, the black one just separates and goes away, and then it comes in later. And it does not mind being with each other. It is the gatherer. It wants to be with the white ones as they start to settle down. They all come back together down here. In this region here, there might be something we could really do because that has some serious energy. They're talking 80 gigavolts, giga electron volts versus one electron volt out here. 80 billion times more power if you can do what it looks like we have done. All right, but they didn't create anything at CERN. The matter is light. Light is matter. You don't create matter from light. Light is the matter. It constructs bigger pieces of matter. All right, the red and the green is just the same, except one's more, more powerful. It gives off more radiation of a different frequency. Frequency is nothing more. Frequency is not a wave. Frequency is a spin, and it's a right-hand rule spin. You go right this way, and the wave is going that way. Now, you see it as a wave. You look at that, you can see a wave. That's a wave. So they think it's all flapping and going this way. No, it's spinning, and we see it as a wave. If it spins fast, it's a, a high-frequency wave. <laughs> More concussive value when that pops you. If it's like this, it's sort of lazy sort of spinning through. That's the difference between the red and the green. Now, these are the particles that are attached together and my statement is is that this is a photon which was from light and literally it is two electrons one this way and one this way this will bounce off of particles of the other every other particle is going to have a white the white will say I'm going to bounce off of you and depends on how explosive that white particle is, how much this will bounce away, and how explosive this particle is in relation to the other particle, and who's moving which direction, and, and how it can move this way. Is it against a solid matter, or is it movable? It's, everything is just, it's not hard to understand. Once you understand, you're dealing with particles, and particles are light, and particles, they can divide. Those two can literally divide from each other. So I'm saying that's the carrier, non-explosive, weak force. That's the explosive, strong force. And side by side, they're electrons. In a configuration together, they're photons. Photons won't kill you. Electrons will try to get into you. Now, if there's only a handful of them, well, you, you know, you're, you're all right. You can just sort of accept them. But if there's so many of them that your other particles say, whoa, 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 it's too many, too many, too, 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 boom, explodes. You go into fire, you combust, because these will incorporate. Those will, those will illuminate you. They'll bounce off. They don't, 
they've, they're already attached. They don't need any more electrons. This one wants another electrons or something to attach to it. It's, this is a part of chemistry that is the invasive part of chemistry. Alright, just to make this extremely simple. All there are is electrons. So when you talk about the hydrogen, you don't have one proton and one electron. You have 1837 electrons, which are dipoles, positive and negative together, and they cluster in here. And that is what makes hydrogen so explosive because you can strip electrons on and off because they don't have to be just exactly 1837. You've got all kinds of isotopes. And then you've got hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3, which is goes way up to 8 to 3674 particles or 5511 particles. By the time you get to helium, you're already up to 7350 particles in the core. So you've got a lot of variations and and different stability levels which give you a lot of different chemical reactions. Now, just to, like I said, I'm going to try to make it simple because I know this gets super hard for people. All right, I showed you the Venturi, how it separated the weak force from the strong force. Well, we can use that Venturi to separate hydrogen from oxygen. I'm almost 100% certain of that. And, well, my father did it. Let me put it that way. I know it can be done. There's no question whatsoever. Now, how you would work with that and how it would integrate into our system which we have now is not really it doesn't look like it's going to be hard at all to do if we can use a venturi to create hydrogen to reincorporate it back into the oxygen you get what's called brown's gas which is an extremely explosive form of hydrogen and oxygen because it has extra electrons they've been forced in and we would force them in with using the venturi we will get to discuss this but i need to discuss it with somebody that can do something about it now it, come up and watch this using water as fuel may be easy my father did this work during world war ii but it had so much power because when you separate those and put them back together you're literally just making electricity and it was so much electricity is like welding and it just melted the pistons and they ended up using the water but they ended up having to use kerosene as well now and i i think we could start running on water water is raw energy it's absolutely raw energy you take h2o what's the difference between that and carbon uh, ch right the ch the carbon you got to get rid of it has to go find oxygen we got hydrogen already and now we got oxygen so that we're using what the carbon has to go work with all right because you're using carbon hy hydrogens hydrocarbons H's and C's all around, uh, C's with H's all around it. And the H's are the things that get used up to make the energy. Then you got to get rid of the C's. And they use the oxygen to work with the H's. Anyway, what I'm getting at is there's a way to get out of this pollution thing. And if we don't, we are in so much trouble. And California is just a disaster. And, the you know, I, it's, it, I don't know if there's any turnaround, but certainly if you're going to, you're going to have to get into this electron flood theory and start working with hydrogen because then you can create your own electricity and nothing nothing gets disturbed in the atmosphere there's no pollution there's nothing all you do is take the particles of water and turn them into electrons and then they turn right back into water that's the byproduct is water you start from water and back to water